Welcome! In this video, we are going to explore the basics of using the Zoom app on our tablets. This is Jill from Boomer Tech Adventures. Let's get started. First of all, what is Zoom? It is a video conferencing app. In other words, you can see and talk with other people through your using your tablet or your phone or your computer. Some of the things you might like to know about Zoom is that number one, it's free. Well, it's free for 40 minutes. If you want to have meetings or sessions that are longer than 40 minutes, you have to buy a subscription. You can have multiple participants, up to 100. That's a pretty big family. You can screen share. In other words, whatever is on your screen, a website or a list of food for the family reunion or an address, you can share that during a Zoom meeting. It's pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it. It does sometimes take a couple of times to feel comfortable with it, but once you're there, it becomes second nature. You get the Zoom app either at the Apple App Store, if you have an iPad, or if you have an Android tablet, you want to go to the Google Play Store. When you're ready, you will see on your screen the, the Zoom app, which is the white video camera on a blue background. If you're going to start your own meeting, you're going to tap on that. Now, the first time you open the app, you will be asked to set up an account, and you have to have a username and a password. And we encourage you to write it down somewhere, because you know you may use Zoom tomorrow, and not use it again for three or four weeks. And we all know we have too many passwords to remember. So write it down somewhere safe. And then it will ask you to sign in. Once you sign in, you will see this screen. And you would come here if you were going to start the new meeting. And you would tap on New Meeting. Most of us, though, receive an invitation via email or through a text to join a meeting already going on. And so something like this would come to you, and you simply have to tap where it says Join Zoom Meeting, and there's that long URL. You just simply have to tap, and that will take you right to the meeting. As you are entering the meeting, you may see a dialog box that looks like this. So you want to make sure that your video is on, that the button is green. Don't worry about the PMI, just make sure your video is on. And you may also see next a dialog box that looks like this, and you want to call, uh, tap on Call Using Internet Audio. Where it says dial in, one can always phone into a Zoom meeting, but right now we're talking about using our tablet. So you're going to tap on call using internet audio. What happens when you open up is you should see a screen with one or more people who are already in the meeting. Uh, this is Ed from Boomer Tech Adventures. Now, what I want to uh, mention is, at least on my tablet, which is an iPad, when I first open up, there are no options showing. They are usually hidden until you tap in the right place. That place varies by brand of the device. So, for example, on my iPad, I tap at the top of the screen. If I had an Android, I would find the options at the bottom of the screen, and that's where I would tap. So here you see what my screen, what my iPad looks like with all the options across the top. And like I said, an Android, you should find them down at the bottom. 
you will notice that the red arrow is pointing to a little icon with a person in it and it says switch to active speaker. That would be where, let me go back, the person who is speaking would have the main part of the screen and other people would be down in the corner. But if I switch to what is called gallery format or the gallery view, which is what I have right now on the screen, is everybody has their own little box. They're all the same. And this is really nice when you are talking with four or five people. You can see everybody at once. And you can tell that I was talking because it's outlined in green. In the next screen, we're going to go over what some of the, the options are. All right, so once again, this is an iPad, so the options are at the top. If you have a, an Android, you're going to find them down at the bottom, and you have to touch the screen. And sometimes it takes more than one try. I will just tell you that. So starting over on the right-hand side, you see a little icon of a mic, a microphone. If it has a line through it, it means you're muted. And you usually have control, and if you want to unmute yourself, you just tap it. Now, I will tell you that the host of the meeting can mute everyone and keep them from talking, but that usually happens in business, not in uh, book clubs or uh, family meetings or a couple of friends uh, having a cocktail hour via Zoom. The next icon going towards the right you see is a little video camera. Once again, if it has a line through it, that means people can't see you. So you want to tap on it so that you are on the screen. Now on the iPad, the share content is in green. It looks a little differently on an, an Android. But what that means is where you can tap, and if you want to share your screen or share a website, that's where you would go. Okay, now, the next little icon says participants. Well, if you tap on that, you will find a list of the participants who have checked in. And you see in this case, there's only me. Nobody's checked in yet. And at the bottom, is the option to invite people. Now usually you only use this if you are the host, if you are the person who has started the Zoom meeting. So if you tap on invite, what you will see are some choices. You can send people an email, you can send them a text message, uh, you can invite through your contacts, you can copy the invite link and then send it yourself several options. Chances are you will send the invitation through either email or a text and once again you will see something like this where you fill in the email address or you fill in the text address and the rest has all been filled out for you and it tells the person who receives this invitation to join the Zoom meeting by simply clicking on that URL. When you're ready, you simply tap on that arrow in the upper right hand corner to send and they should receive very quickly the invitation. Now, somewhere in your set of options, you should see either three dots or the word more. Now, again, you're looking at an iPad screen, and if you look way over to the right, you can see those three dots. And um, some Android machines don't use the three dots, they use the word more, but you just need to click on it, and you will see these options. Let's look at it. The first one is you can hold a chat with everybody or just one person during the meeting. So if I clicked on chat, the screen would have uh, popped up, and you can see it says send to Ed Brzee, but next to that there's a little downward pointing arrow. If I click on that, the option would be 
everyone or a list of the people that are in the meeting. So you can individually chat or you can send a chat message to everyone. Now, I have read that the chats show up in the screen recordings that are available to the host. So you want to be careful what you put in the chat. All right, so I've sent this message to Ed and now he's responding. And notice it says from Ed Brzee to me privately. So I know that everybody hasn't seen it and it's his response. So that shows up on my screen. So a lot to watch during a Zoom meeting. You can also show your appreciation for a, a comment somebody's made or a point they've made or perhaps there's a little performance going on because again, Zoom is live. So once again, you go back to those three dots or more and you see right at the top, there are two little icons. One is for clapping hands and the other is a thumbs up. So if you click on one of those, it will show up on the screen. Kind of a nice way to acknowledge a grandchild or a friend uh, or a young person who has said or is doing something pretty cool. Oh, suddenly notice I am in San Francisco and it's a bit foggy. How did I do that? Well, once again, we go back to those three dots or more. And if you scroll your eyes down, you'll see something called virtual, virtual background. Well, let's look at that. When you tap on that, your screen will change. And so you will see these icons down at the bottom. Well, you'll see the first four. You'll see the word none, and then you'll see the little picture of the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, an outer space picture, and also an image uh, all green, like in the middle of a garden. These are the alternative backgrounds that Zoom provides you as a choice. However, if you tap the plus sign way over at the right, you get to choose other backgrounds. And you can take, you can, um, take a picture. You can use photos from your Photos app. Uh, you can use a website as a background. You have choices. And you can see with the blue underline some of the choices I have. So what I would do is I would tap on uh, the picture I wanted for the background, and then I would go up to the upper right-hand corner and I'd tap the X when I'm done. Up, oh, now I'm in Zimbabwe with my friend Al the Giraffe. So again, the alternative backgrounds are fun to play with. Uh, keeps uh, everything light, and uh, but it also gives you a chance to show off some of your photos or perhaps show people where you have been recently that they might like to see. Well, what if you want to just go back to the standard background of wherever you are? So once again, you go back to the three dots or more, and you tap again on virtual background, and this time you're going to tap none, which is way over on the left. And then when you're done, you would tap the X and you will be back to uh, the usual background. Now those are most of the basic commands or the basic options in Zoom. When you're ready to leave the Zoom meeting, you're going to look for the red button. And again, in the iPad, it's in the upper left hand corner it will be I believe in the lower right hand corner on the Android. Uh, the thing about Androids each company can change things a little bit so if I make one comment about what it's like on a Samsung Android it might be different on a Motorola or a Tracer. So you, you have to be adventuresome and not be afraid to tap your screen to find what you're looking for. Anyway, when you're ready to leave, uh, you're going to tap the red button. 
if you are the host, like I was in this situation, it will see, say end. And if I touch end, tap end, that ends the meeting, everybody has to leave. However, if I'm just uh, one of the participants and uh, it's time for me to leave, the button will say leave and I would tap it and I would leave the meeting. Now, if that meeting is still going on in a half hour and I want to rejoin it, I can. All I need to do is either retap the invitation I got through the email or text, or I could uh, join the meeting in progress. So there are a couple things I'd really like you to remember. Remember that the screen appearance varies on different devices. So I Zoom with my sister. She has an Android. I have an iPad. And the first time we Zoomed together, things were not obvious to her because, of course, most of the commands were hidden. So I'd say, well, tap up at the top and see what happens. Well, nothing, because she needed to tap at the bottom because she had an Android. So just remember, if you're working with somebody di through distance uh, conferencing, that if they have a different device than yours, uh, some of the options will be in different places. And again, speaking of those options, most of the time they're not visible unless you tap them. Sometimes they're a little hard to find or you don't have the tap quite right. Uh, so you don't be afraid to play and keep tapping and pressing a little harder and you should find them. You want to look first for the microphone and the video camera icons. Uh, these are the most important because these are the ones that allow people to hear you and see you. And one last thing, Zoom can be tiring. Try not to do too many in one day. Uh, they can be exhausting trying to watch the video, listen to what people say, and participate. Thank you for watching this video. We at Boomer Tech Adventures hope this video has been helpful. We invite you to visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by.